for a class that I am teaching. This is basically a canvas board with watercolor ground um, on top of it, that Daniel Smith watercolor ground, which is the one I prefer. I've laid down my initial washes just to map in where the colors go. And I have mixed cer mostly cerulean blue. And here are our colors. Assuming you can see that. Yes, you can. Okay, we've got raw sienna in here. We've got uh, raw sienna and cerulean blue mixed for the sky. And then we've got cerulean blue for the water. For the shadows, I use the cerulean blue. I use gamboge and ultramarine to make this green. The lemon yellow and the raw sienna to put in the darker shadows in his um fur on his head, it's wing, it's not fur, the feathers on his head, and now I've got burnt sienna and cerulean to make these darker, this darker mix, so I'm going in here and just building some darks, and I've mapped out, excuse me, I've masked out all the lighter areas that I wanted to save. So we're just going in here and just starting to build our darks, just where I see them in the photograph. And I am painting this from a photograph from Pixabay. Pelicans are wonderful subjects to paint. Now I'm going to go in and make a slightly browner mix for this wing up here, just to differentiate it from the, uh, and I think I'll leave some of the blue showing through. Cerulean blue makes a gorgeous um, shadow color. And this was supposed to be left white, so we're going to push this darker. And I am drying between each layer of color here. I want this to be dark over here. And there's some dark in here and under here as well. But we don't want a solid mass of dark. We just want some variation to suggest, um, actually, let me get a smaller brush to suggest uh, the feathers. I'm changing to a number two here. We don't want to paint in every feather. Let's get some of that blue back. Just adding a little bit more of the burnt sienna to just uh, neutralize this a little bit. Still want it on the blue side. Even if it's a little green, that's okay. Actually, I am going to change to a different brush. I'm going to change to this number four. This is a Lowell Cornell. I'm just going to lay in some of these darks. Much better. That simulate the um, feathers are in groups. So you have to kind of Simulate that idea when you're painting this. And we'll just continue to build this texture. And I'm going to go ahead, let's see, and lay in a light. That's probably a little too dark. A really light version of the gray here just to get some color on that. And it's actually lighter up there, so I'm going to just come in there with that. Then we've got some gray along here. And some coming up here. So you really just have to pay attention to your reference um, photo if you're painting from a photo and to be 
make sure and get those uh, darks and lights in the correct place. Here and I'm, there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna let that dry. All right, and um, we're gonna just keep pushing these darks. I am gonna lift out this white area a little bit in here. And maybe some in here a little bit. More like that. Then we'll go back in and add a little texture in there in a bit. Okay, I'm going to dry this and I will be back. All right, so I'm just going back in and I've made a slightly darker mix here with the same mixture. This is just negative painting around to suggest the um, feathers that are here. Since this fellow is all about texture, this is just a dry brush here. He has this wonderful, this is that wonderful uh, pouch that's underneath his beak. That is just so awesome. And this is a that's that this is that number four uh, little Cornell brush. We're just darkening our darks right now, building up our darks. I like to build my darks up gradually because then it's easier to um, correct them as you go. And. Okay. Now I think we'll work on that um, post a little bit and put some darks in it. This is just about building texture. This is that same dark mixture. And you can put as much texture or, you know, as, as you would like in these posts. I think they look really neat. You put a lot of texture in them. They make a nice backdrop. This is quite busy, I realize that, um, with all this texture. And I will go back and probably soften that. You can actually... scrape this back. These boards are wonderful for this. You can actually make texture with, uh, this is just a cut up credit card. All right, so 
Now I'm going to put in some burnt sienna because there's a lot of burnt sienna in this post. And everywhere where I have the lighter color, I'll probably go back in and add the burnt sienna. And this is one of those cases where you really don't shouldn't be too careful because if you're too careful it's going to look too contrived it's almost better to uh, be loose with that Harsh lines. If you can help it. blend the two. You can even spritz this if you want to soften a bit. Trying to keep that in the uh, in the actual post and even give it some texture like that. Drag it a little bit in there. there. All right. And we'll just keep building that darker and darker as we go. And I will dry that and be back shortly.